So today I thought I can just share a few experiments I've been trying out to kind of improve my productivity when it comes to workflows uh, with Cursor, with Cloud 3.5 Sonnet, maybe using both of them. So what I've been trying out, say, let's say we wanted to use Cursor here. Uh, we maybe we created like a plan here in Cloud 3.5 that is kind of optimized for Cursor, right? And when we kind of get into this, uh, we kind of have our commands that we're going to run in, let's say, the terminal. So this could be the npx commands, this could be the packages, this could be setting up our Next.js project. Uh, so we kind of can extract that from this plan. And we also try to optimize uh, for, let's say, we wanted to do kind of the composer, right? Uh, let's say this is the composer. So we can kind of optimize the plan here for the composer. So we have like a prompt ready for that. Uh, so the issue I have had uh, been trying to when I'm optimizing this is that when we run the composer, we get kind of the file management in the wrong places here. So we're going to lose a lot of time. We have to uh, move files and stuff. So this is what I've been trying to do to kind of skip that step. We can get straight into our yeah workflow right so let me just show you the first example i have here and maybe we'll do another one i've been testing out so yeah let's do it so let me just show you the prompts i've been playing around with uh, let's say in cloud or gpt 4.0 so i've been testing out this xml uh, format here i think it's pretty cool so we have this uh, xml format app description i want to create a next year as app uh, that shows these overtime animations Let's say we have a data on five companies, the size of a company in years uh, and it should be in JSON format. Write the code to animate this to show the growth of these companies over time. Always keep the biggest companies on top. Use a dark team with good contrast. I'm on Windows 11 and VS Code. And we kind of end with this tag here, right? And we have an instruction tag. So create all the needed files. Save them in the correct directories, please, uh, for my next JS app, right? And then we have like kind of the create a step-by-step -step plan for the npx and npm commands for my app into one code block in plan A. Plan B should just uh, repeat the app description and instruction from above, please. So we run this now. So hopefully now we can get like an optimized instruction here for cursor. So yeah, this is kind of what I want. I want to extract all the npx commands directories and install uh, what we need for this and we have the plan b that is basically repeating what we had on top here so what i've been doing is uh, yeah just going to copy this if we head over to cursor uh, let's say we have yeah we are in this folder here then we can just do Control k and we get this command instructions here down in the terminal just paste in that and hit enter and this should kind of create all the commands we need here Control run right and now we're going to run these commands. Of course, we are using this TypeScript, lin, tailwind, no, yes, no. Okay, so we're going to install that. And this is going to create some uh, directories and it's going to run our next uh, app, right? So it's going to fire that up and we can just go straight into it. Should be pretty quick here. Okay, now it's running that. It's installing that and we can just go here and we should have our app ready to go, right? Okay. So that looks pretty good and now it kind of comes to the next part of our plan here so plan b now i'm just going to copy this and we get the instructions and here comes an important part here now because now i found that if we go to open folder now and we kind of select uh, the folder uh, we just created right that shouldn't be too hard let's go here right okay so now we are in our folder we're just going to press Control shift i go into the composer and here we're gonna do like an at mention and do code base so this should use all of this as our context right paste in our app description and our instructions and just hit enter and hopefully now this is gonna oops create all the files we need and hopefully put them in the correct place and our app should be ready to go in kind of no time so let's just let this run and see if we can get this to work. Okay, so we have our page TSX, layout TSX, we have our types, we have our tailwind config, and we have our company growth. 
so yeah, we can of course change up all of this, but let's just try to accept all, right? And uh, okay, and let's check out our app now. Okay, so I guess let's bring back up the terminal. I guess we aren't running this, <laughs> so let's do npm run dev, right? Let's go back here. And yeah, that was pretty cool, right? It's not perfect, right? But it's something we can do to work on. So I, t I would say that was a pretty smooth experience setting up this. So this is one workflow I have been playing around with. And I found it kind of useful to just separate these two operations. So we kind of install these dependencies and set up our directories first. Then we can use the composer because if we skip that step, I kind of found out that all our files get just placed in the root and it's a nightmare trying to figure that out. Uh, let's just try it again with something completely different. Uh, but if you uh, are interested in this and you want to learn kind of how these LLMs are working, you should definitely check out today's sponsor, Brilliant.org. Are you curious and always eager to learn new stuff? Then you're in for a treat with Brilliant.org, the sponsor of today's video. Brilliant is where you learn by doing with thousands of interactive lessons in math, data analysis, programming and AI. Their How LLMs Work course is an immersive AI workshop that lets you experience the mechanics of today's most advanced software tools. In this course you will get hands on with real language models, exploring how they build vocabulary and how they choose their next words. So lately I have been working on strengthening my programming skills, especially when it comes to the mathematical side of things. That's why I have been loving Brilliant's introduction to algorithms course. It's been super helpful in teaching me about conditional algorithms, binary search and various sorting methods. So what I think sets Brilliant apart is their uniquely effective learning approach. Each lesson is filled with hands-on problem solving, proven to be like six more times effective than just passive video lectures. You build critical thinking skills and develop a powerful daily learning habit all in just minutes a day. So to try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash allaboutai or just click the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription a big thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. Now let's go back to the project. So now let's do a different app description. So I want to create an Next.js app that reads data from a JSON file. The JSON file contains six different names and gender. Create a feature that selects a random name and pairs random names and pairs them up in a smooth transition. Each pair must be in different genders. This app is for picking random teams for a board game. I'm on Windows 11 VS Code, basically the app is the same. But now we're not going to run this in, uh, in uh, Claude, because now I want to try this over on the, on the chat feature in Cursor. So let's head back to Cursor. We are kind of in the same place here, but now I think we want to make uh, our uh, directory here. So let's just call it board game I don't know uh, let's just cd into the board game right uh, let me just open up our board game folder here uh, yeah let's just do that okay let's open up the terminal again and then I want to do control l right and I want to paste in my prompt here okay so let's try this now so let's just do uh, chat so what I'm hoping for is that we get this bash commands. Yeah, that's good. So you can see we have something called bash command here. I can zoom in a bit. Maybe like this. Sorry. So you can see we have a bash command here. So when we run this now, uh, you can see this is going to run this down here. TypeScript. Yes, yes. Okay. So. You can see we created a random team picker, so it's basically the same, but we are doing this from the chat feature. And this also almost skips a step, because now we can kind of paste it straight into here, and run these bash commands down in our terminal, right? Just by clicking run here. Okay, so let's see if we got our app now. Yeah, that looks good. So that is set up. And if you continue down here now, you can see, uh, okay, but now I just want to grab this, 
copy that and close the chat function. Uh, I kind of want to go into this, right? So again, I just want to open up this, right? So let's just do it like this, okay? And we can do the terminal again. So npn run there, right? And you can see we have our app still up here. Great. And uh, now I want to go back into here. And now I want to select again code base, right? Paste in our app description. So this is for the board game. And I want to do the same. So now we're just going to see it can reproduce the result we did last time. And yeah. Okay, so we are creating a JSON file. That's what I wanted. We have our main page, player pairs.tsx. So I'm just gonna let this run now. And let's just, okay, so that was done. Uh, okay, it's a bit bugged here, but let's do this. And now we can accept all, right? Yeah, go back here. Okay, we have a small error here. Uh, so we're having some issues uh, with importing this. So one thing I noticed about Cursor, it's very bad at importing. I don't know why, it's very strange. Uh, so let's see here now. Okay, so I think we can remove this, right? Maybe add this. Okay. Um, let's see here. Something like this, right? Okay. Um, here. Should we just do this? Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. So now we can run <laughs> npm run dev here. Let's open up this. Uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, generate new pairs. Okay. So you can see uh, the text here is wrong. I guess we can fix that ourselves, right? Go to maybe player pairs. Uh, grid. What if we change this to maybe gray? Let's try that. Uh, let's just do it. Let's just do black. Okay, that works, right? It's a bit boring, but you can see now we are pairing up like a female and a male. Just random order. So I guess it's working. It's not the, the nicest one, but uh, seems to be random, seems to be working pretty okay, right? Uh, and yeah, uh, so which one of these workflows do I think is easiest to use? I think they are pretty much the same, uh, but I'm gonna explore a bit more. Uh, I kind of liked what we did with this bash command that we can run from this chat here. Uh, so let's just do one more thing for fun before we kind of wrap this up. So I have also been experimenting with dot .cursor rules. So this is some instructions you can basically set as system instructions, custom instructions for cursor that it will try to follow when generating code, right? So uh, I'm just gonna show you something I've been testing out. So uh, I wanted to kind of look at, let's say, structured outputs. So if we go over to the API here from OpenAI, you can see uh, I just grabbed this uh, example here, right? And I grabbed an example here on structured data extraction. Uh, we're using Pydantic. Uh, and I just copy this over to Claude. So I brought over some cursor documentation here, right? And I pasted in that. And I grabbed some OpenAI documentation for the structured outputs. And I just instructed Claude here to uh, write some uh, dot cursor rules that gives instructions to always use the structured outputs with Pydantic. And you can see it kind of gave me this file here, right? So let's just copy this, right? And then we can kind of go to cursor over here in our folder. So let me just create a new file here. Uh, dot cursor rules, right? I think this is going to be, if we paste in here now, you can see this changes the extension to Python, but I don't think it matters. I have been testing it out, so everything is commented out here anyway, right? So here is kind of our rules. So these are the rules just for this uh, folder or instance, right? 
So let's try to use this now. So let me just come up with a prompt here. We can just go to, so let's just do, uh, go to the composer. Let's just add our files here. Uh, okay, and uh, let's do write Python code to extract name and age from the text. Uh, use the structured output, please. Let's click enter. So let's see now. Okay, so we are actually using Pydantic. Uh, we want to load our API key, right? Uh, okay, this looks pretty good to be honest. Here we have an example text. Uh, okay, let's just accept this, right? Um, uh, okay, uh, I think we need to... Let's just do uh, create a V environment, right? Okay, and uh, let's do... And let's do activate. Okay, good. And now let's do uh, the imports. So we're gonna do like pip install openai python pydantic. Yeah, that should be it, right? Okay, that was done. So let's clear that. I think we need to set our dot um, env here. Let's do override. Not here. We can do that. Let's do override true, right? Okay. And let me so see. Okay, so we have our API key. Okay, so let's check what kind of model we are on. I think we need to be on, let's say, four of mini, right? Okay, let's clear that. Let's do Python. Let's see now. So the text was John Doe is a thirty-year-old software engineer. Good. Yeah. That seemed to be work pretty good. And uh, let's do, we can add a new line here. Okay, so Maria is a 35 year old doctor, so let's try to run that. Uh, okay, so we only got John. Uh, does this have to be like a list or something? Uh, okay, so let's try this. Okay, good. So you can see we got John and Maria. 40, 35, yeah, perfect. So that seems to work pretty good. So I guess uh, the cursor rules are working pretty good here. And yeah, I'm gonna explore more with this. But for now, I think it's pretty interesting because you can kind of give your setup exactly what you want. But I'm gonna keep experimenting with this and I'm gonna report back if I found out uh, something that's very cool here. Uh, but for now, it seems to be working pretty good. We got the structured outputs. Uh, we used the uh, beta chat completion dot parse, right? And yeah, looks pretty solid to me. So I'm gonna keep exploring these cursor rules to see if we can do anything that's even more productive with this, right? Uh, so yeah, pretty cool if you ask me. So yeah, maybe not the most interesting video today, but I thought it was pretty fun to try to explore a bit, kind of learn a bit more uh, how we can actually use this to increase our productivity. Uh, I'm in the middle of a move, so uh, busy days, but I thought I could get this video out here if some of you thought it could be interesting. So I don't know, maybe there will be a video on Sunday, we'll see. Uh, like I said, I'm moving to Oslo for a few months, so I'm gonna be a bit busy, busy this weekend, but we will see. Other than that, thank you for the support, thank you for tuning in, uh, if you want to become a member, get access to stuff we create, just follow the link in the description, don't forget to check out Brilliant, thank you for tuning in, speak soon.